Let's talk about the moment that it got real for you in the online course world. And so I grow my first website to 700,000 visitors. I remember getting an email from somebody, you know, who joined my email list for like that first website. And they, they're they like, thank you for taking the time to write your website like the way that you did. It reads so well. I'm blind and I use a screen reader. It just elevated the importance of, of the craft. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, take the time to do it well, do it right, because you never know who you're going to help. Hey, Mark Aarons here. Welcome to The Modern Consultant. If you're listening to this in the episode order, then this is actually going to be the first full episode that gets released outside of the introductory episode that we've already recorded. That said, I have the pleasure of actually being interviewed by my friend, Brandon Fong, and he's got a top 2% globally ranked podcast, and he's interviewed New York Times bestselling authors, you know, a former Olympian, as well as one of the original sharks from Shark Tank. And one of the cool things, if you look at one of the highlight reels from his podcast, you'll actually hear guest after guest after guest saying it was one of the best interview experiences that they've ever had. And after now being interviewed uh, for his podcast, I can honestly say that I feel the same. So with that said, for every single episode that gets released after this one, I'll be the one in the interview seat actually asking all the questions and pulling out the best strategies and everything for you all. But for this episode, I get to actually be in the interviewee seat and then I'll get to share a side of myself that I never really get to share with the world. So with that said, I'll go ahead and let Brandon take it away. Mr. Mark Aarons on our marathon of Brandon and Mark Day. This is our two. <laughs> Super excited to have you here, man. This is going to be so much fun. Mm-hmm. That I'm uh, honestly, uh, I'm honored and I can't wait to do this. It's going to be a bunch of fun. We have fun every single time we talk. Uh, and this <laughs> one's going to be even better. So yeah. For now, sure. For sure. I'm super excited to introduce my friends to the one and the only Mark Aarons. And I thought a great way to do that would actually be to start with two really beautiful stories that you've told me in our separate calls, our separate adventures about, about your childhood. And we literally just before we hit recording, you were talking about your dad just a little bit. And in one of the things that really stood out to me when we had our, some of our chats was uh, basically a comment that your dad had made to you when you were younger, you were driving home mm-hmm. from his office one day and he shared about something about like improving future generations that really stuck with you. So I'd love for you to maybe share just a little context on, on your dad and uh, what he shared with you that day. For sure. Um, so I was eight years old uh, and I'm driving home. My dad, first off, you know, he's he's a doctor, you know, um, small town doctor, Ultraeus, Jamaica, you know, that's where I was born and raised. And uh, we're driving in this blue, like uh, Volkswagen, you know, and and it's like real old school, real low key. Uh, and I'm riding in like the hatchback, you know, because that was like my favorite thing to do. And as we're going home, he's, you know, I forget exactly the full context, of it, but I remember one thing that stuck with me forever. And he said that he believed that every generation uh, should do better than the one that came before, you know, and something about that just landed with me, you know, and it's been this like guiding light in my life, you know, since that moment. Um, but I, I just, you know, honestly, like I, I, I knew I was just screwed at that moment because he <laughs> is an MD PhD. Uh, and when he was eight years old, he walked into a public library, picked up a book on biology and decided right then and there that he was going to become a doctor. And I was like, you've kind of set the bar a little bit high, uh, <laughs> And then he went on to get like he 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 took my my grandmother out of poverty like by getting the scholarship to go to med school straight from high school, um, bought his first car out of that scholarship, and then started you know he went into orthopedics. Then he went you know and started his own private practice, and then he went back and got his you know uh, his PhD, and he became the first bioethicist and palliative care physician in the Caribbean. Wow. So, this is the guy who's like every generation should do better. <laughs> like, 
what? Like, <laughs> you and it was funny because I guarantee he probably not doesn't remember even making that comment to you, but you're probably sitting in the back of the car like, oh my God, this is, I got, I got it cut out for me right now. I got it. I got it made. That's so funny. That's yeah. amazing. And I, I, so I could see little Mark having that seared into your brain at that point. And so the, the, the other, the other story I'd love to kind of share to add a little bit of context is you had said earlier in one of our earlier conversations that you are an encyclopedia kid. So like, I, I can just imagine like if you got a dad, like Dr. Aaron's, that's an MD PhD, you probably had no shortage of, of books in your house. And I think uh, you would, you would kind of shared some early memories of like your first experience diving into knowledge and being surrounded by knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'd love for you to maybe share a little bit about your memories with that. No, so one of the things that uh, he and I used to do, like we used to go on these long road trips, you know, um, sometimes in Jamaica, even in other countries. And he said that he used to enjoy having me as basically his co-pilot and navigator because I would ask nonstop questions. Like I was <laughs> always trying to find out like, okay, but why, but why, but why though? And looking back, I was like, man, I must've been a really annoying kid, but no, he was into it. I'm so glad that it was. Um, but at some point, my parents also decided that maybe we should give him a way to answer these questions himself. And so <laughs> that's where like the entire printed Encyclopedia Britannica came in. And I don't know what they were thinking, if this was a secret plot to like take me out, but they put it on the top shelf of like <laughs> where the TV was. And I was like, I'm not, I'm still not a tall person. And so like, you know, back then it's like, I would have to climb up to be able to get to the top of the, and it, it was this like just daring adventure, you know, to be able to find the index, which is like the last book in the collection, <laughs> then find the word that you're trying to look for, which then tells you which book in the rest of the collection to go find. So like, you got to climb up a second time to like, go get it, you know? Right. So like that, but I, I, I was into it. Like I loved like when you, when you get that payoff, you know, of like finding what you're looking for. And then it's like, Oh, it's like, there's this entire world that you didn't know about, you know? And I've just forever always been like fascinated by that. Even now, like I, I'm making discoveries on a daily and weekly basis, mm. you know, and a lot of my friends and stuff are the same. So like, yeah, hundred percent. And it's like a PD kid and we'll probably be that way until like, I die. like seriously. Yeah. That's so funny. The immediate picture that's popping up into my head is like, uh, this, there's no way it was this dramatic, but like, you know, in Harry Potter, Ollivanders, the, the wand maker, he like has this gigantic ladder to climb like five stories to go and grab a wand off the shelf. That's like what I'm imagining. Little, little Mark on like a, <laughs> a massive teetering. <laughs> I had a bit like that because there were like three <laughs> levels to the shelves. And, and like, I, I remember, I even know like the type of, material the wood was and everything they had like i have very different memories that's of this, funny you know? that's yeah. funny and it's it's you and i definitely share that core value that payoff and like now it's dangerous because you and i are in a slack channel together where we're sending each other <laughs> videos and shit that we're finding out but literally this just happened to me yesterday like i was diving into victor frankel man search for meaning and like mm -hmm. logo therapy yeah. and i'm like i'm like oh my god like this like how this entire world just opened up to me and i i love that you and i share that and it's it's always fun to go down rabbit holes with friends and so so let's let's build on this theme a little bit of both like improving the future generation and like your kind of deep desire for knowledge. There's kind of like a few more mm. gaps that I want to fill. And then I of course want to dive into some of the juiciness that our friends can learn from your brilliant brain and your, your deep, sexy voice <laughs> as, <laughs> as they, as they listen to your, you share your content. But before we get there, let's, let's talk a little bit about your bridge from you, you alluded to growing up in Jamaica and, and coming mm. over to this country. And that was kind of like a pivotal point in your journey. And I know when you did this, yeah. you were not that old. So maybe share a little bit about like your initial plan for 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 leaving Jamaica and coming to the United States and what your life was like back then. So, gosh, you know, so it was a different time uh, back then, uh, and you know, for many many immigrants, period, like the way to come to the United States is through academia. You know, and if you want to even get uh, a a a um um if if for you to be able to get a visa, a student visa, to be able to come, like you have to be able to show how you're going to pay uh, for 
your for for college, you know, because they don't want you to just come and become like a word of say illegal immigrant, all that sort of stuff. And so for many uh, students who come, um, it's either you've got to have some bank loan secured or you have to be able to show that you were able to get a scholarship, you know. Yeah. And so I was absolutely on the scholarship route. You know, and like like my dad had sent me to like SAT um, prep uh, classes and like college prep classes, that that sort of thing. And and you know, I remember selecting John Hopkins University um, as you know where I wanted to go. But then uh, this weird opportunity happened an entire year earlier than when I was planning to go um, apply for them, and. There was a college fair that was happening in my hometown, and my dad told me that I should go to it, which was so weird to me because he never lets me like miss school for anything. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm a doctor's son; I can't even fake stick. Like he just knows, <laughs> right? <laughs> and like, like, it's like so I don't, I don't get to skip like <laughs> other people, you know. And so, so I go to this thing, and and. Um, I have two older brothers and both of them had already gone off to college. And it's just like, I remember being inspired by them. They came back and it's just like, wow, they've changed and grown so much. And, you know, it'd be amazing if I'd had the opportunity to do the same. And so at that college fair was uh, one of the universities that one of my brothers was at. Um, but then uh, there was another university there. I also got there late. And so everybody was packing up to go. I was like, crap, I missed my shot. You know, <laughs> and there's like one school that was like still kind of hanging around there. And and so then I went to them, you know, and they asked me, you know, what my GPA is, what my SAT scores are and everything. And it's just like, and they they they're calculating um what your high school um uh report cards are to like the GPA system. And uh, they, they calculated and I was 0.1 GPA points away <laughs> from being able to get a full scholarship. And they're like, sorry. And I was like, shit. Like, <laughs> like I, just, I never felt so dejected. I was just, Cause like I rushed to get there. It took me an hour and a half riding on like public transportation to be able to get from where my school was to where this college fair was, you know? And, 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 it, and it was all an ass like trying to get there and then <laughs> this is happening and i'm like fuck i blew it you know like i but did i like i, I you know and i was just trying to sort of and they're like but actually there's this program that if you had an interest in it they might be able to you know uh they might be able to fit you in i was like I'm listening. More. Like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, you, you have my attention. <laughs> and, 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 you know, um, they tell me about the environmental sciences program. And I was like, cool. Like, you know, in, in, in high school, like geography and, uh, you know, it was like my favorite subject, you know, and it's like, I was a, I was a discovery channel kid as well. Like I would just watch hours and hours and hours of like, you know, and so it's just like, you know, actually, yeah. Um, Okay, you know, and and so then I leave, and then I don't hear anything from them, and I was just like, well, I guess it didn't work out. And then I remember coming home from school one day, and then like my parents are just like kind of standing, like you know, in the living room, and I was just like, this is very ominous. What is going on? Um, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> and they tell me that you know the university sent uh, a letter, and they wanted to respect me, like they didn't open it. They wanted me to open it. And I was mm. like, ooh. And then I do. Uh, and then, you know, it's like, you know, Derek Mark Aarons. And, you know, it's this, you know, we'd like to offer you the, and it, the Distinguished Scholars Award. I remember the exact name mm. of it. And it was the full scholarship for four years. And I, I was, I, I was, I was, I was like, I got a shot. Like, <laughs> you know, but then right after that, I was like, I don't know, because not long before that, 9-11 happened mm. and that the world changed. And we sat down and as a family, because I was like, should I take this? Should I wait one more year for John Hopkins, you know, or should I, should I take this opportunity now? So we had a family meeting and then it was like, okay, um, the world is changing. You know, America might be closing their borders. You know, mm. we don't know if scholarships are going to be available to us after what just happened. You know, like the entire landscape, the global landscape has changed. 
you know, and I really took that to heart. And so I was just like, okay, let's do it, you know? And, and so then I did. And so I then went to, I was, when it came time for me to go to college, I was um, 16 uh, and, uh, and I, I was green, <laughs> like, like all the way green. But then <laughs> that year was the final year that they offered that scholarship. Had I waited the year, wow, it wouldn't have been there. Wow. Yeah. That is a beautiful story. I'm literally, I've been, as you and I, as you know, my listeners don't know, but like you and I have been going deep into like story structure because of the, some of our work together. And I'm literally picturing like the hero's journey, like, like having that call to adventure and like refusing the call, but then deciding to go and holy shit, your life would be completely different if you didn't make that jump. And uh, man, so freaking cool. So let's, let's continue on the hero's journey and maybe let's bridge the gap between you and it's important for everyone to know, like I want to say this foundation because the academic background is really important in some of the brilliant stuff that Mark does with his clients in the research phase. So we'll, we'll be talking about that a little bit later, but uh, let's bridge this gap between like the, the track that you were on studying science and kind of the online course coaching and consulting world that you live in now. So let's, let's share kind of like one final story in this realm, and then we'll dive into some of your content so we can give our, everyone, all of our friends listening right now, some juicy takeaways, but um, let's kind of like talk about the moment that it got real for you in the online course world. And so I know you had this story of like taking an online course that completely changed your life and kind of opened your eyes to what was possible in this, in this world that you and I kind of live in. Uh, but maybe share that what that online course was and, and what the kind of results were that you got from it that made you realize how important it was. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really passionate about, um, online education. Um, because of course, like education has changed my life. Uh, but this, I was always fascinated um, with business uh, because when I, uh, in undergrad, uh, this, this grad student had introduced me to a book, um, Rishat Bordat by Robert Kiyosaki. Hmm. Uh, prior to that point, I, I knew nothing about business. Uh, and it just, it blew my mind. I was like, whoa, wow, this is real more please. And then I read cash flow quadrant. And then I was like, Oh, employees, self-employed business owners, investors. And I was like, wow, everybody in my family is either like employed or self-employed, but we don't really have like any business owners or investors. Like I wonder what that could look like for me, you know, but I'm here on this track of science. I just don't have any context whatsoever, you know, as far as like how to even where to even begin with that? And like, there were light clues and stuff in the book. Like you want to understand more about marketing and sales. Cause you know, every business needs to sell. And it's like, if you had that, like you, you know, like that's one of the foundational skills as like an entrepreneur. And so, um, when I came across this online course, you know, that uh, it's, it spoke about business, but just online marketing, online sales, you know, and affiliate marketing, creating content, um, uh, and also a lot of search engine optimization. I was like, this might be, this might be it, you know? And so then I took it and it was a nominal investment for me at the time. I'm in college. I'm not making a whole bunch of money, you know, but I, I take the course and I just devour it. You know, I am splitting my time, uh, because I, I, I learned about, you know, rich dad, poor dad, um, in undergrad, but then like, I, I found this course while I was in grad school. And I'm writing my master's thesis while I'm also then like I'm spending time with write master's thesis, take this course, write more content for the website. And I just keep flipping between the two uh, and I just keep doing it day in, day out. And, and I love it because it's, it's very quantified. And I was just like, oh, I get this. Like I do research. Oh, I've got to do, I'm doing research by day, research by night, basically. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> <Not stop. laughs> like, like, let's go, you know, I'm like, oh, there are answers to be found. I will find the answers. I can do that, you know? And so I keep doing that and then I keep writing content. And so I grow my first uh, website um, to 700,000 um, visitors, um, like over the course of like its lifetime. Uh, and it starts to generate enough revenue uh, for me to live off of it. Not in like a big way, but like enough, you know? And I was like, Ooh, this world is real. Like none of this stuff is fake. I've read all this stuff in books, but now, now it's no longer, it's no longer theoretical. And I remember not just how 
taking this course and implementing it could actually have changed the trajectory of my life in this way, but it could also help other people as well. Because I remember getting, I remember getting an email from somebody, you know, who joined my email list for like that first website. And they, they, they're like, thank you for taking the time to like write your website, like the way that you did. It reads so well, I'm blind and I use a screen reader. And I was like, mm-hmm whoa <laughs> i just <laughs> it's, it's like thank you um why and it just it this stranger you know sent me this this kind message of gratitude and i was just like it just elevated the importance of, of the craft you know it's mm-hmm. like take the time to do it well do it right because you never know who you're gonna help Mm. You know, and 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 like I would have people writing in like, you know, like uh, people who were in the field, like uh, a medical. And so it was in like telecommunications and figuring out like the uh, mobile Internet, you know, and it was kind of blowing up and stuff at the time. And then I would have like these professionals who, you know, um, were sometimes emergency workers trying to understand, you know, what's the best like Internet for them to be able to do their very important work. And I was just like, wow, I I didn't know that this was going to go here. But yeah. 100% 100% want to support you. You don't know this, but my dad is like, no, let's not get into that. But yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so the course, the name of the course um, uh, was SBI. Um, it stood for Solo Build It. Uh, and it was uh, by this doctor, which is part of the thing, part of what stood out to me, uh, Dr. Ken Evoy. Uh, and I was like, huh, this doctor figured out business stuff and decided to share it with the world and it's changing my life. What could I figure out that's not within my realm of, you know, official expertise to share with someone that could then change their life? Cause wow, he did it. Like, I wonder if I could do that. And then eventually that became helping other people do that too. So beautiful. And I, the quote that I have two favorite quotes that almost come up on every single episode, just cause like I'm looking for them. And then so they're so important to me, but one of them is by Michelangelo. I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I mm. set him free. And I think it's so cool okay. to hear so many people's different journeys, but like, I truly believe that we're all born with like this kind of purpose, these skill sets, these superpowers that we have. And like, you know, life throws this stuff on top of that and makes us realize that, oh, we shouldn't be doing this or whatever it is. And so life is all about like being that angel in the Marvel and carving off chunks that aren't us so that we can be more authentically us. And I think it's so cool just hearing the parallel of those two stories. It's like we heard in the beginning about you just being this kid that was like this encyclopedia kid that just loved knowledge so much. And like you heard the story about your dad saying that you wanted to, you know, you had to create opportunities for your family that were bigger than the the last generation. And then you come across this world where it allows you to combine those two things of creating a new opportunity for your future, for your family and thirst for knowledge and all this kind of stuff. And like it, you know, I can totally see that being like a, that, that, that cherry on top being that email of like, you just got to transform a stranger's life with your work can see that being just uh, a a mind, mind blowing experience. So that is so beautiful. And I I would love to dive into, you know, obviously you've done so much work from that time period of, of um, growing that first website into where you are now, but the, the mark that I was introduced to is this badass consultant that's con- coached over 1600 e-commerce agencies, you know, New York Times bestselling authors and learned directly from people like Jay Abraham and Ramit Sethi and Ryan Dice. So obviously you've been on quite a journey since then of, of, of building up all this stuff. And I think um, we kind of set the foundation for all of the deep learning and, and the way that you approach breaking down things to make sure that they're really easily understandable and packaging them in ways that can impact people's lives. And so I would love to dive in kind of like the the rest of the time that we have together into how we can share this with people, because I'll, I'll say one kind of piece of context and stop blabbing and then we'll get back to you. But like one of the things I see, I see is an old version of me. And then also many entrepreneurs, it's like, we have this great idea and we just go and build and launch things because it sounds like it's something that we should be doing. And one of the things that I've so appreciated in working with you and your approach is how rooted in research and uncovering the important seeds 
that you can then design with like actual proven content, proven facts that can transform people's lives. And so I wanted to kind of set that as a, a, a place that we can maybe start because I think people kind of understood your academic background and, and the importance that research has had on your life. So I would love for you to maybe like bridge between the two worlds. Like you have like the world of academic mm -hmm. research that you were brought up in and you've translated that knowledge into like understanding how to go deep and design products that change people's lives. So maybe we'd love you to share a little bit about what you pulled from both those worlds and kind of how you think about it today. Yeah. So, and, and thank you. Uh, thank you for, for just all of that. You know, it's very humbling, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause it, it causes me to just reflect on how far, you know, mm. uh, I've, I've been able to come uh, and I sincerely appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Um, academia. One of the things that I had to do in undergrad, I was the primary research assistant to the co-investigator on a Harvard-led uh, research project. And oh, we were charged with uh, deploying the K-shell X-ray fluorescence device, of which wow, there were only... Fancy. <laughs> it, 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 you know, K, KXRF uh, for short, you know, it's, it's basically a really fancy x-ray. Um, and it, it was one of four of its kind in the entire United States at the time. Wow. And the purpose of it uh, was to um, measure the levels of lead in human bone because a lot of existing tests at the time would test for levels of uh, lead in the blood. However, if you had been exposed to lead over a prolonged period of time, it would no longer be in the blood. It wouldn't be detected because it had been deposited into your bone marrow itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you wanted to see just like if you wanted to measure that, you, you would need to have a special uh, uh, device to do that. And the KXRF was the device to do that. Uh, and we wanted to uh, check um, in um, underserved populations uh, in two parts of the United States. And so there's two ways that this ties into everything that I do now. The first is messaging and the second is research. Hmm. Basically, you know, hi, we're here from the government. Um, we're here, here to help said no person ever and then had a positive response from the community. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it's just not a thing. Uh, and but we're going in to these communities that have not been the, the society. It has just not treated well. Hmm. Uh, and we're hoping to ask them to sit under a strange x-ray for 45 minutes <laughs> <laughs> trust us it'll work you know like it's just no uh it's it's just, it's just not the case so part of what i had to do was i needed to come up with some way of messaging to communicate with the community to gain trust uh and for us to be able to do this, because we, I know that this is going to be able to help if we can figure this out. But again, what do we say? How do we like bridge that communication gap? And then I dug into the research. I dug into the research, and then I had this like, this this. I was just like, ah, oh, gosh, you know, X ray is scary, but ooh, what if? And then I came up with it. I I, I ran the calculations, make sure that the numbers and everything were accurate, and then I was able to come up with this statement. Sitting under the KXRF for 45 minutes is equivalent to being in the sun for seven minutes. Mm. And I was like, boom. And just like that, now everybody was open mm. to being able to do, participate in the research. So like, wow. have you been in the sun for seven minutes today? Sure. Okay, cool. Well, hey, you can sit under this for 45 minutes. And it's like, that taught me the power of messaging and how mm. it could open the doors to creating a positive impact on somebody's life. And in many ways, that was like my first introduction, if you will, to persuasive writing that some people now call, you know, copyright. Like, 
like that's the first way that like the academic background uh, influenced um, what it is that I do now, because then that came that then would feed into like, you know, the, the website and everything like that. The second piece is I had to get really good at coming up with excellent questions that would inspire people to give the responses that you're looking for. Because I was also working on another research project, which was the legislative staffer impact on climate change policy in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, And I found through my research that legislative staffers had the most influence over policy because they're the gatekeepers. Like, like politicians trust their, trust their staffers more than anyone else. And so if you wanted to have a positive impact on climate change policy, you know, you would need to have great relationships with staffers, so on and so forth. But to even be able to get that data, I had to be able to come up with the right questions. Mm. And then also a, you know, a communication plan, outreach plan, basically, to even get the staffers to be able to open up to share the kind of information that was necessary. This is all sensitive stuff like this, depending on their answers and how it's done, like it's, it could affect their careers. It could also affect, you know, of course, the politicians that they're serving um, as well. Like the ramifications are huge. So it's like, I had to be able to like really find the line, like, how do I do this? How do I reach out to them? How do I ask them the right question? Make sure that, because I'm also, also only, I'm only getting one shot to ask mm-hmm. these questions, you know? And then, if I, if I, and a one shot to get on this person's calendar, you know, uh, and, and that's going to be it, you know? And so that's how one, the research um, component, it just really taught me the importance of uh, really designing a really good um, research study and getting it done right in one shot. Uh, and then also coming up with outreach plans to be able to make sure that people were not just open in answering questions, but also open and to participate and take action. That was such a cool story. Like, I mean, I can totally see, cause I never heard that you share that before. And now I totally see where your level of detail came from and like, like down to, and this is something I admired in your work too. It's like down to the order of the questions, like the, the difference between asking for a first name is the first question versus the 14th question, right? Like that's the level of detail. I know you to pay attention to when it comes to understanding this data. And I'm sure you listening right now, like, like think about the level of understanding you have of your customers. If you were able to apply like this level of rigor, but I also want to say it in the way that Mark's package, the, the work that I've done with Mark, she's packaged it in a very attainable way. It may sound very daunting, like, oh my God, there's no way I could do that level of detail. But Mark has been able to bridge the gap between insane, intense, X-ray, super inter- intergalactic ninja, governmental 45 minute sun X-ray <laughs> to to being able to translate uh, that to other people and, and make it uh, a seamless transition. So um, let's dive into one area of this research where we can start to kind of bridge the gap to like helping people to gather and apply this data into either launching new products or services or or improving whatever it is that they have going on. I know we kind of alluded to this and you talked about this in just your last story of of surveying and how Mm -hmm. important the, the, the art and the science of surveying. So before we dive into like the nitty gritty of like the the nerdy part of asking it let's let's take us back up high level again let's go the thirty thousand foot view because i know one of the things i've always admired about your work is i know you you were also behind the scenes of like ramit sethi and his content i'd always admired how they uh surveyed their readers to understand how to develop products and services that actually served Mm -hmm. people at the highest level so i guess uh, share like the thirty thousand foot view like what is a survey funnel and like maybe some of the ways or logic behind how this whole structure works and how it came to be. For sure. Right. And so like you mentioned, um, I worked with for me, you know, for like three years um, and great times uh, and learned quite a bit. And one of the things that I had to get really good at um, 
because like in that role, uh, I was the lead coach, you know, trainer, you know, mentor to 800 plus, you know, uh, entrepreneurs and everybody for the growth of, you know, their product, you know, their startup, everything started with research. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do I show people who don't have like an academic background like I did, how to get this done effectively? They may not necessarily need to do it to like the rigor of like a research study that's going to be published or something like that. But um, how could it be done? You know, and so I, I got very rigorous and very good at being able to explain like, you know, how to do, you know, uh, what some people in, you know, a uh, leading startup world um, in Silicon Valley uh, call customer development, you know, um, basically, you know, customer research interviews, that sort of thing. But what do you do if you need to ask questions of a lot of people? That's where surveys come in, right? It's really, you're either going to do research with these, they're like interviews, or you're going to be doing it with surveys. And so it's like, okay, that gets a little bit more nuanced because we've all had taken bad surveys. We've also all like said no to filling out surveys, you know? Right. And so it's like, how do you like um, uh, even do that? So it took me actually years. Uh, and this was after I'd finished up like working with me and I was doing work for private clients and having people who have like email lists of like, you know, 40,000, you know, email subscribers and up. And it's like, okay, well, if we needed to ask them about um, what offers they were wanting, like, what are the questions that we would ask? Right. Uh, and there's this really, but we don't want to just know about the offers. Um, we also want to know about the audience who, you know, it is that is wanting like these offers. And then uh, we also want to know about, okay, great. Well, if we know what it is that they want uh, and who wants it, but what about price points and stuff, right? And so I started to realize that there were all these different components and many of the existing like survey methods and stuff out there, that like they were good, but they nothing ever seemed to cover all the pieces of the puzzle that you needed, right? Like there's one that like I even built on that, I think it's called the Western Door Pricing Survey. Uh, Alex Ramosi, author of $100 million offers, like uh, he actually uses this uh, survey in like his stuff uh, as well. Um, but I actually found that like that survey is good, but it only covers pricing. Right. Mm. And so like for the people, for my people, like if you're trying to like create something that's really, really high end, like you're, you're wanting to generally know about audience offers and everything related to sales and pricing as a subsection of like sales. And so like I built on that, uh, and then came up, uh, with a survey method. Uh, that then covered like it, it's it's up to like 14 through 16 questions that you want to ask to be able to find out about your audience, your existing audience, as well as future potential audience within the offer section, finding out about existing offers that they want, as well as future offers that they want, and then additional uh, specifications about the offer. And then with the pricing, finding out about not just the price that they want, but the price range mm -hmm. as well. So that if you were going to deploy a pricing test, whether it's through, you know, paid advertising or to your uh, email list or through whatever channel, you don't go pricing too high or pricing too low, you know, like you're in the sweet spot. And so now you can even figure out what the pricing tiers should be mm -hmm. and to find and to fit that all into like one survey uh, so that you could send it out and it wouldn't take forever for you to be able to deploy it as well. You get the data back. It's accurate. You know how to analyze it. And now you're not even having like a, a sales conversation because they've already told you what they want. You just following up with them at that point and saying, Hey, um, the thing that you want is ready. Do you want it? Hmm. Man, there's so much that we can dive into. I, I want to kind of share another piece of why I love this content that you develop so much. One of which is one of the biggest pieces of advice I ever got from a mentor, my first ever mentor when I was 16 years old. She told me there's a whole story behind this. But basically, she said, Brandon, if you ask for money, you'll get advice. But if you ask for advice, you'll get money. And there was like a whole context behind that story. But the gist of it is I recently had on John Levy on the show, and he wrote the book called You're Invited. And one of the mm -hmm. things that I learned from John Levy is this concept of the called the Ikea effect. And that is essentially that people 
people value things and relationships that they've been able to invest in. And so once somebody is invested in something, they're much more willing to learn about uh, ways that they can continue to develop and deepen that relationship with you. And so I view a survey as a bridge between those two pieces of advice that I got from Brenda and John Levy. It's like, if you design a really well-invested survey where somebody's investing their ideas into you, you can then leverage that to serve them at a greater level. And then also, I know one of the things that you do inside of the surveys that's just so brilliant is not only are you collecting data, but one of the questions is, hey, if I created this thing that's in the price point that you're looking for, and I was able to build it, would you be interested in me telling you about it when it comes out? And then people, opt in to basically being sold if you develop this. So I, I don't want to steal the thunder here, but I know one of the fine lines you talk about is the difference between persuasion and manipulation. And that's like integrated into your process. So I would love for you to maybe share that intricacy and then we'll dive into some of the other areas of surveying as well. Absolutely. Um, it's such a great, um, it's such a great topic, right? It's like, the difference between persuasion and manipulation um, really boils down to consent. It's really it. Like, that's just, just consent. Give people the opportunity to decide if they want to participate in something and give them clarity on what that thing is and trust them to make the decision that is in their best interest. Mm -hmm. That's it. And that allows us to respect the other person. You respect their right to have agency. But when you take that away, um, now you're talking about manipulation. You're trying to get them to do something um, that they haven't agreed to. And now, now you're in the realm usually of manipulation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons why we include that question in there. It, it's just, it's one, it's, 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 it's respecting um, the relationship that you have with the person that is choosing to you know, fill this out and to share all this information with you, uh, and just being above board, you know, trust people to make the right decision, you know, and you know, and and, and respect them. And I, I had done some number crunching, and we've got like it. The amount of people who say yes to that question is like higher than eighty five percent. Wow, yeah, that's incredible higher than 85 percent, and it's just also so assured reassuring to know that oh you get to filter out the people that don't want that and that's fine and it's not even like a large number but you you get to have that confidence that like anything that you send out is going to just the people that want to know about it yeah. And so, of course, like open rates and like action rates and conversion rates and everything is like super, super high uh, because they've opted into it. They want to hear about this. And so now yeah. it's just a follow up. So I, <laughs> you and I are definitely the coolest kids on the block right now, nerding out about surveys. <laughs> and so you, you, you listening right now, you get to join the super cool kids as we talk about how to design epic surveys. But this shit changes lives. Legit. Like, uh, like this stuff changes lives because if you get this right, people are literally sharing the exact data that you need to not only construct something that will impact them, but also let like they opt in and say that they want it and you create these cohorts. And so, so let me, let me just take this like high level again, then we'll go nitty gritty. But like, mm -hmm. if you're listening to this right now and let's say you have 50,000 email subscribers, or maybe you have a hundred thousand or 10,000, or maybe you have 20, maybe you don't have an email list and you just have some clients that you've worked with or some friends that you have a well-constructed survey can work on all of these levels, right? Like if you have a hundred thousand person email list, you send out a well-constructed survey, maybe you get a few thousand responses and you can then segment and build based on that. Or you just have some friends and some people that you've worked with and you construct this survey and you get the data and they opt in. And so like, I, I think it, like this is such a beautiful and effective strategy, no matter where you're at, if you know how to ask the questions the right way, that will empower you to create content that changes lives. Now I'm just being redundant, but like, this is just exactly what you stand for. Um, and is super, super powerful. So, um, I'd love to go into maybe some of the sections of the survey and maybe give some, yeah. some details on how we can do it. But is there any other context you would want to add on top of that before we go into there? I found that 
the more it works even better when we're putting it out to folks who have spent the time to show people that they care. And so maybe they've already, they've built it with the building of the email list. Like the people who are on that email list obviously are on that email list because they want to learn from this person. But the people on that email list, you know, like they consistently open those emails. They consistently read those emails and they're engaged uh, because mm. they feel like they have a relationship with the person who sent in those emails. Like they have a vested interest in it. And so when they get an opportunity to give back to the person that has been helping them all this time, they're happy to do that. Yeah. And one other thing that just popped into my head too, is like when I was running marketing for uh, superhuman Academy, like when we would launch a product or service, we we followed Jeff Walker's product launch formula a bunch. And I know that this, a survey is actually one of the pre launch steps that he recommends is that you send a survey out in advance. Um, and I know, I don't remember the exact math cause it was so long ago, but like the percentage of people that filled out a survey prior to the launch, like those were your buyers There's the people that filled yeah. out the survey were the people that were engaged and wanted to find out. And so just another level of detail there. So, um, obviously we can't get through all of the, the, the content inside of the way that you structured your surveys and your, your beautiful life work, uh, your, your life's work in, in the next, uh, however much time we have left. But, uh, one section that I thought was like, I don't know, to me, it's the most exciting and like really, really, because you can filter out the data beyond this. But uh, in the last section, you talk about being able to determine the amount that someone will pay. Uh, for your mm -hmm. products and services. And not only does this help you to create effective future offers, it might even tell you if you're underpricing yes. in your current offers. And so there's like, Absolutely. there's there's way more value than just creating. So I would love for you to maybe share uh, some of the strategy and thought process behind some of the questions or some of the things that you ask in that component of the survey that's really important. Sure. Um, this part was so huge because we would routinely find out for our clients that they were uh, undercharging by a factor of like 2x to 10x. And I actually even found that out for one of my own offers as well. Like when I was like very, very early on, you know, someone, uh, you know, had like, uh, they had listed a price point that it blew my mind. And then <laughs> like, um, and then I, I actually ended up charging that. And I was like, oh, they were right, you know, but it, it always blows my mind. So the questions, right? One of the questions uh, is if for the product or experience that you selected above, what is a price point that is so high that you'd never pay for it? And that tells us like, the upper end of like the price range that we're interested in. And like another one of the questions that we ask is what's the price point that is so, so low that, you know, it, it you consider that it's like too cheap. So you'd never buy. And so then that gives us like the lower end, you know, and then there's like other questions and stuff in there as well, because we want to get like some bands, you know, going, but like those two give you the ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And what that does for you is if you collect enough data points from enough people, they're telling you, hey, this is where the higher end, like premium price points should be. And this is where like your bargain, like price point should be. But if you price like below this, um, we're going to go with somebody else. Or if you price too high, um, we're going to be like, oh, well, I guess, you know, you're this luxury provider or worse if you price high. Uh, and your branding and positioning doesn't match the price point that mm. like you now you're actually you're creating a negative reputation because it's like it's like you know it's like okay we're not paying you a hundred thousand for a honda civic like you know we're just not <laughs> like, like it's just like it's not knocking a honda civic but you know it's 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 you know it is what it is you know so you, you definitely don't want to fall into that situation yeah yeah yeah, man, like, and, and just, I mean, you listening right now, like, just think about the impact of like understanding that right then and there. And then, and then the ninja part, I'll just like plant some seeds. Obviously you can, we'll, we'll have it linked up in the show notes and we'll share how you can get in touch with Mark. But it's like, once you get this survey filled out, 
just think about this. Like you can literally go into your survey results, filter for the people Mm -hmm. that said, yes, I want you to tell me when this offer is available and filter for the prices that you would be considering. And you can literally, even if you have a thousand survey results or whatever it is, you can immediately, um, you can immediately segment directly into the amount of people that are exactly interested in what you're looking for. And so just think about that level of clarity and sophistication that can happen from that, which is amazing. So thank you for nerding out for me on uh, super ultra sales uh, <laughs> survey creativity here. I know we're, we're kind of coming up on time. And one thing that I would love to squeak in before we uh, head off is uh, some of the exciting stuff that you have moving forward. And uh, so I know you have uh, at the time that this is launching, I'm assuming that we're going to time this with this, but you have a new podcast coming out. So uh, I would love for you to share some of your excitement and some of your vision for uh, what you're creating with the modern consultant. Uh, Absolutely. Um, And I'll just add one last thing for like, if you've got somebody who's advanced, who's like listening to like survey stuff, one ninja thing is we don't we don't actually do this for like a whole bunch of people but like if somebody's got the stuff in place it's really cool imagine mm-hmm. filtering down for like the survey and then now with that filtered down list now you're able to have like this really premium pocket of your audience and then you can upload that to facebook to create like a custom audience and then look mm-hmm. like audience right and so yeah. it doesn't it's not just filtering down within your existing audience now it becomes a prototype for you to be able to go out and find more people like that, leveraging Facebook's algorithm. And that's just with Facebook. Like mm. that's, that's where stuff starts to like really get yeah. cool. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so, but to your point though, yes, the modern consultant, I am excited about this. Um, oh gosh, I remember like, you know, like landing on the name and I have you to thank for a lot of this. <laughs> um, you know, you are, you are my podcast mentor. Um, you know, and <laughs> like, like uh, it, it's so cool to see what you've done. Uh, and it's really inspired me to have these amazing conversations with people that I know will be able to help transform our people's lives. But the vision for the podcast really is like the landscape for consulting has changed. I mean, if you think about it, right? Like the world changed after the pandemic. We're never going back to the way that things used to be. Like now it's about living life the way on, like on your terms, you know, remote work, you know, work-life balance. You can have like this, you can increase your client capacity. You can work from anywhere you want in the world. You can have a distributed team. You can have all of these things, but you just need to be able to find a way to be able to do it on your terms. And you can also create um, the kind of like, you know, productized offers or business or w- what have you uh, to be able to increase the kind of impact that you have on the world as well. You can have the profit, you can have the impact on people. It doesn't have to be this either or black and white picture. You get to design this like amazing outcome, not just for yourself, for your team, but also uh, for the people that you feel called to serve. Uh, and so I'm excited to talk to more people about that and to cover not just the business topics, but also life topics. Because if we get down to it at the end of the day, like we're not just, we're not machines. Like mm-hmm. all of us have some driving why, as far as why we're in business. And this is something you and I have related on, which is, you know, it's like entrepreneurship is really like a personal growth journey. You know, it's 100%. about becoming your best self, you know, like it, it's, and and so it's like, you want to be amongst people who are on that path with you, you know? So, and to have, you know, co-pilots, co-brainstormers and everything, you know? And even if it's just to like hear a story from someone that gets you to think about, you know, one area of your life in like a different way, that can be the butterfly effect, you know, that mm-hmm. then changes everything, you know, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, I am super excited. I've already, because you and I are interfacing with this, I've gotten to listen to some of the earlier episodes and I'm pumped. And if you're listening to what just came out of Mark's mouth, you can tell that we're very values aligned. So if you're looking for more incredible content, like what you're experiencing, uh, if you're listening to this on my show, because I think another thing that we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to include this inside of the modern consultant. So uh, hello, modern consultant listeners as well. Uh, (laughs) Super excited that you're on this journey as well. But yeah, I think it's just so amazing the work that 
that you're doing to help people become that greater version of themselves and leverage entrepreneurship as a growth journey and make a massive impact along the way. So super encourage anyone listening on uh, the Seven Figure Millennials podcast to go check out the, the Modern Consultant and uh, super excited for all the stuff that you're doing there. But besides that, Mark, anywhere else that uh, people can find out you and all the incredible stuff that you're up to? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, thank you for that. And, uh, you know, 8020solutions.co uh, is the name of the website. You know, if that changes or something in the future, we'll update that. But that's where it is. That's where you can find out about me. Um, and yeah, find out about all the things. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I, I kind of did this in a little bit of a backwards order than I usually do it. But one thing that I love asking all of my guests when I have the opportunity to is what does happiness mean to you? So I would love for, for you, Mark, to share your definition of what happiness means to you. I love that question. And I've given a lot of thought to this. Um, and when I hear happiness, at least the way that most people speak about it, I actually had to distill it down into like two parts. Hmm. Of course you did. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> 100%. If I can apply a filter, I will. Uh, like, <laughs> fun and fulfillment over time. It's like fulfillment um, for me is about creating, living up to um, my deeper purpose, you know, with self-actualization and transcendence usually within like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Uh, like that's where fulfillment comes from. It might not be fun though. Like growth, stepping out of the comfort zone into the growth zone is often uncomfortable, but that's where growth happens. Sometimes in that discomfort. If you can have fun along the way, cool. You know, but often sometimes the fun actually comes after the fulfillment, you know, um, and fun tends to be more temporal, you know, but I think happiness, you know, or peak experiences even is probably when you have like a combination of both. If you can find a way to have fun on the journey to fulfillment, mm. then you got it. You got it all. Beautiful. Mic drop. We'll not add anything on top of that besides a really quick conversation I want to have with you listening. I just want to say you could be listening to any other podcast right now and you chose to click on this episode with Mark Aarons and man, you have been on for one heck of a ride. And I, I know that there is something in here that can absolutely change people's lives. I say this at the end of like every single show and I say it because I say it with complete sincerity that just like Mark's course, that one course changed his life, podcasts have changed my life. That's part of why I'm so passionate about this. But there is something in here that whether it was a story of, of Mark getting that scholarship and making the jump to leave Jamaica and come to the United States at 16 years old and and make the leap from his his previous path of being an academic and, a, and, and chasing the, the world of of going deep into all this research to being an entrepreneur that's now changing lives with content. Like there is stories or maybe it was something from the, the sales survey. There's something in here that it that, like contains a seed of greatness that could be something that changes someone's life. So my ask to you is if you're listening to this and you found value in it, it would make my day. It would make Mark's day. If you just take a second to share this with someone and um, that can really, really make a difference more than you know, and you may never even hear about it, but it could actually change someone's life. So I'm super, super grateful for you hanging out with us today, whether you are a new friend or an old friend. And uh, yeah, Mark, thank you so much for being here. Any final things you want to say before we head off today? Just thank you for having me. This honestly, <laughs> I, I, this is, this is probably the best interview um, I've <laughs> ever done. So. Thank you. Like, I, I mean that I'm really not gassing you up, like real talk. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. And we'll be talking in another hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see you in a bit, man. I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for checking out the show. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button and also subscribe. So you don't miss another one. It also tells us which ones that you like the most so that we can then do more interviews like that. If you want to go from idea to implementation, though, especially if you're wanting to productize your expertise so that you can scale your impact on your clients and, of course, grow your business, 
then join our email list. There we're going to talk about how modern consultants can productize their expertise so that they can have a greater impact on the world around them and live life on their terms. If that's up your alley, I hope to see you on the other side. Talk soon.